California has had a 3.9 magnitude earthquake that shook Long Valley Caldera, super volcano. It's on the subduction zone, as we know, of the Pacific coast under the North American plate. And it's uh, here you can see one of the past super eruptions 760,000 years ago. And it has had over 72 earthquakes in the past 14 days. Today's earthquake was about, the 43.49 was about 100 miles south of the Long Valley Caldera Crater Lake. Let's take a look at the maps, see what's going on. And all of you there, please be very careful because it looks like the Pacific Ring of Fire is becoming very active. Please support my Patreon channel since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. My Patreon channel will have five different videos from my YouTube channel every day. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. Okay, according to Volcano Discovery, and let's take a look at this map. This is the Long Valley Caldera Supervolcano. Take a look at this. This is Mono Lake. Uh, this is about five miles area, and uh, 5, 10, 20, 20 miles south is about the Mono Lake area, the resurgent domes and all this. So take a look at this. Keep, a, keep in mind the Mono Lake area. And we'll come back to this later on. And this is Sizewell Berkeley. This is our area right here. We've also had a 4.4 Banff, Canada. This is the area near uh, Calgary. Is it near Calgary? I can't remember. Sorry. Even though I'm Canadian. Yeah, Calgary. Okay. About 660 people have reported feeling it. I guess most of them are around Calgary. Um, because otherwise it's... Uh, the mountain area so you can see that that's pretty big today's earthquake and this is the earthquake we're talking about today shallow earthquake take it take this off and uh, let's keep in mind what happened in the past few days we had a 7.1 7.2 here at fukushima we had a 7.7 7.9 here between fiji new zealand and australia and uh, that had a tsunami about three foot around fiji this one here did not have a tsunami. But let's go to this one, because this one we have to be alert about. Okay, remember this lake? The Mono Lake? Right there, Mono Lake. That's it right there, Mono Lake, right there. And these are just the first frequencies. Let's go to the other ones. Again, the other ones. Okay. Oh, sorry. There we go. This one here. I took it off. Let's, let's, put, let's put it back on again. I'm sorry about that. Tectonic plates, population density, not much there. Take this off so we can see better. And uh, let's go and see what's going on. And the contours. You can see there's Mono Lake. Mono Lake is, is of course, shaken. There's Mono Lake. That thing there is Mono Lake. And that has been shaken, Mono Lake. That has been shaken quite a bit because of our 3.9 earthquake. Of course, USGS stops this right here. And um, if we extrapolate, we can see that this whole area has shaken. And this is uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. And this is right here, right here, as you can see there. That is Yellowstone. Yellowstone and Yellowstone Lake right there, and Hebgen Lake right there. And uh, we remember that many a time we referred to that magma, the mantle plume that comes from Baja, California, and it's a Y shape. This uh, west area of the mantle goes under San Andreas Fault and the Walker Lane Fault System, which has all the high um, the risk volcanoes on the west coast. Are right here and on this uh, walker lane fault system and the eastern part of that y-shaped mantle plume goes into salt lake city yellowstone and then turns into a an imaginary seven under idaho now uh, these uh, areas here the subduction zone is what's causing this 
the Pacific Plate under the North American Plate. San Andreas Fault takes up about 75% of that pressure, and the other 25% is picked up by the Walker Lane Fault System. And uh, that has most of the volcanoes there. As we see, it's not one fault. It's thousands of faults put together, as you can see here, all these red broken lines. Now, going back to this. Come on in. Okay. There we go. So, obviously, we can see that this is a very high-risk supervolcano, the Long Valley Caldera of California. Okay, so you can see how this has moved. Going back to this, this is what uh, long, uh, vol the volcano discovery has told us that we've had over 72 earthquakes below 2 magnitude, and uh, we've had over 2 and above. This one here, as we're talking about, is 3.9. And, and this is it right here. This is our area. And a little bit of the background of Long Valley Caldera. Volcano Discovery tells us, large Long Valley caldera east of Sierra Nevada range, resulting of giant explosive eruption that happened 760,000 years ago and formed the widespread Bishop Tuff. Caldera has been showing unrest in recent years in the form of deformation of the caldera floor and earthquake swarms. It contains numerous hot springs, just like uh, Yellowstone does, and fumaroles. And uh, they do have the Long Valley Observatory there, established by USGS to keep track of that. Now, again, this is the map that we saw, and this is the area of our 3.9 earthquake shaking the uh, area. Following the Bishop Tuff eruption and formation, the super eruption 760,000 years ago, activity continued in the central part of the caldera to form a lava dome, Smaller explosive eruptions of rhyodacite pumice occurred as well from outer ring fracture vents, and the last activity was about 50,000 years ago. Remember that 70,000 years ago, Yellowstone had a lava eruption and another 80 eruptions since that 70,000 year ago eruption. So basically, they, they have, uh, they're not that far from each other, they're about 600 miles from each other, Long Valley from Yellowstone. So we're talking about uh, huge volcanic eruptions. Now, in its early history, the caldera contained a large lake where the new lava dome formed an island. Beach deposits can be seen on the caldera walls today and later. The lake drained through the Owens River Gorge. The Owens River Gorge, uh, as we can see, is what leads to uh, Ridgecrest. This is the Owens River Gorge down here between uh, Long Valley and Ridgecrest. That's the Owens River Gorge. Um, okay. Anyway, it's not here. Owens. Okay, Owens Valley, right there. That's where it drained this way. Okay. That's, that's what they're referring to. Owens Valley, Owens, Owens River Gorge. The younger Inyo craters. Mono Inyo craters, where are they? Right here. Okay, again. The Inyo craters are around here. Okay. And that's where, um, before the Ridgecrest earthquake uh, on July 4th and 5th, a couple of, uh, couple of years, two years ago, uh, the uh, geologists were telling us and warning us that uh, it would be most possible that there would have be a, a big earthquake, major earthquake right there, and there was. So the um, Younger Inyo craters overlap the caldera, but are chemically, technologically distinct from Long Valley magmatic system. The long-term trends. Earthquake activity at Long Valley caldera remained low since the mid-1999, mid-1999, so uh, September, oh, July 4th. I guess they were talking about the July earthquakes of Ridgecrest. Average just 5 to 10 earthquakes per day with magnitudes less than 2, occasionally magnitude 3. The deformation trend, renewed uplift, and the resurgent dome that began early 2002, ending 2003, largely offset by two centimeters, subsidence that accumulated from early 1999 through the end of 2001. The, uh, the 1999, uh, that was 20 years before the 2019 earthquake of Ridgecrest. They had another 7.1 then. 
okay, 20 years before. Uh, now, the resurgent dome has since shown minor fluctuations in uplift and subsidence about remains, but remains roughly eight centimeters higher than the late 1970s. So it's become inflated. The trend, CO2 trend, carbon dioxide gas flux, carbon dioxide, one of the volcanic gases in the Horseshoe Lake tree kill area has shown little change. Relatively high levels of 50 to 150 tons per day sustained for the past several years. Okay, that's low levels. 50 to 150 tons of, day of carbon dioxide per day coming out of uh, Long Valley Caldera Supervolcano. And let's remember, just as a matter of information, do you know how much carbon dioxide Yellowstone emits every day? 45,000 tons per day. And because of the huge amount of carbon dioxide being given off by Yellowstone every single day, that's how they found that they have, there is a tremendously huge magma chamber under the magma lake of the magma chamber. There's a magma reservoir, which is huge under Yellowstone because of the fact that it emits 45,000 tons of carbon dioxide every day from Yellowstone. Well, okay, Yellow, uh, Long Valley is not that bad. It only gives up, as we said, 50 to 150 tons per day of carbon dioxide. But it still has 240 cubic miles of magma discovered underneath California supervolcano Long Valley Caldera. This is uh, an article from two years ago, Forbes. So 240 cubic miles of magma under California supervolcano the uh, Long Valley Caldera. So all of you there, please be very careful. Uh, keep in mind that we have to be alert for earthquakes. Thank you for your support and please leave your comments.